It's been a momentous and terrifying day for Auckland. After laying dormant for nearly 600 years, the city's volcanic field is coming to life. Ironically, it's an absolutely stunning evening here in Auckland, the kind where everyone would usually be heading out to the beaches. Instead, we're waiting. Not sure what to do next. Not sure if this volcanic threat is real or not. Yeah, we packed last night, actually, when the earthquake started. We're heading out to Henderson for this place. It's got to be safer over there. I'm trying not to panic. I was hoping to wake up this morning and find it was all a bad dream, but unfortunately not. By 8 o'clock this morning, the roads out of the evacuation zone were gridlocked. We're supposed to be fleeing for our lives. The traffic's not even moving. Despite instructions from civil defence authorities, many people from outside the evacuation zone joined the exodus, increasing congestion. We're asking residents outside the red zone to stay in their homes until further notice. Soldiers from Papakura Military Camp joined forces with civil defence staff and police going door to door, making sure no one had been left behind. They also patrolled shopping centres to prevent looting. By mid-afternoon, the evacuated areas were ghost towns and the normally congested roads were empty. Throughout the afternoon, the earthquakes that set off the evacuation gradually became less frequent. But tonight, the city is still on level three alert. Well, joining me now in the studio from Auckland University is Dr. Simon Barker. Uh, doctor, can you tell us that earthquakes have become less frequent this afternoon? Does that mean the threat is receding? Uh, no, absolutely not. We see no sign of this uh, in signals that we have that showed earthquakes uh, rising towards the surface and deformation of the crust, both indicating that the eruption is very likely. So you don't believe the authorities have overreacted here? No, not at all. Um, the size, uh, style and timing of the eruption are difficult to predict, but it's also very difficult to uh, evacuate an area once an eruption has begun. Uh, so evacuation in uh, due time, due course is very sensible. Now, we've just received reports of dead fish and discolored water from a helicopter crew flying over the harbour. Is that likely to be connected with all of this? Yes, I'd say so. Um, it probably means that the magma or the molten rock uh, is very close to the surface um, and an eruption is actually happening. So, assuming there is an eruption, what are we likely to see? Um, well, the very first phases of the eruption uh, typically generate what we call a base surge, which is a laterally moving cloud of ash and steam. Uh, it's one of the most hazardous parts of the ocean, part of the eruption. Um, and when the magma comes into contact with water, hot rock meets cold water, that generates an explosive eruption. And can people escape from that? Uh, no, they move pretty fast. How fast is pretty fast? Well, the ones uh, that have been observed in historic eruptions uh, can travel up to 100 meters per second. Uh, so once they've started being generated and started moving, there's really no escape. Dr. Barker, I'm just going to stop you there. Uh, we're going to go to our camera and sky sitting down. Just a few moments ago, uh, this cloud of steam uh, has risen up out of the water between Mission Bay and North Head. Dr. Barker? <laughs> Take an information to Hanford as you leave the volcano's gallery. 